Hey, and welcome to Insomnia Insight number 375, in which we will learn a lot from Matt. He will share some real insights from sort of the inside uh, perspective when you are on that path towards having had a lot of fear, being really scared of being awake at night, real scared from insomnia, towards a place where there's less fear, but some kind of odd things happen with that safety radar in the brain. And we'll, we'll, you, you, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about as we are looking at this comment really from Matt. Before I do, I just want to say big thanks to Matt and everyone else who are doing better, but still staying here on the channel, sharing, you know, uh, insights and commenting, supporting other uh, members of the community. And I think this is what makes this community so special is that, you know, in, in a lot of the communities online, the ones that do better, they just kind of say bye bye and leave. Understandable, completely understandable, but that leaves those who are struggling in this sort of vacuum, which is so unhelpful. So I'm really, really, really appreciative of um, people like you, Matt, who who share this. So let's let's jump in here and look at the message from Matt. Um, it this is actually a comment on uh, Open Class 84. If you want to take a look at it, that's where it's that's where it is. So let me read this, and then we'll we'll uh, expand a little bit on this. So. Uh, Matt said the following, hi, Daniel, thanks for the reply. And you know, you're right. It, it really does draw back to my comment about not an insomniac, but sure, I'm scared of becoming one again. And just to, to clarify that a little bit, uh, when I was working with Matt, he once said, you know, I, I'm not sure that I'm an insomniac anymore, or maybe I'm just someone who's scared of becoming one. It is this sort of like, I'm not sure if I'm scared or just scared of becoming scared, if you will. That was kind of a little bit of context there. Now, let's continue reading. And this is a very different fear from pre-education, pre-bedtime, pre-meeting you. But even that fear fades with time. Like, yes, if I have a series of sleepless nights, I might be upset. I might be anxious. But that's it. I won't be fearing for my life or mixing over-the-counter sleep meds or lying in bed at 8, begging my mind to let me sleep. This is a very different concept of a big one than my previous sleepless experience. I think an insight I came to when reading This Is Natto is that I think I have anxiety of feeling emotions. Like, for example, my parents are great sleepers. I'm anxious of feeling jealous of them if I have a bad night. I'm anxious of being the only one at work who hasn't slept the previous night. Not because I think it will affect my job, but because I don't want to be that person. In a way, it's really interesting psychologically. If I look at it from an outside perspective, how my sleep anxiety evolved from a direct fear of health consequences to one of not wanting to feel certain emotions. In a way, it's interesting too, because when my whole sleep issues began, I called my parents who are big hypochondriacs and they couldn't see the issue at all. They were just like, oh, why don't you do something fun and just sleep when you're tired? You'll sleep eventually. And I just was not having it. I was insisting on hospitalization and just having a meltdown. In retrospect, it's funny how the answer was there right from the beginning. I just needed the edu education to accept it. I was also kind of thinking about a world where our lives and health actually were proven to depend on sleep. Could you imagine? No one would sleep because of the immense pressure to do so. I think biologically, we instinctively know sleeplessness isn't harmful but we can get so confused by unverified horror stories, our own thoughts, our imagination. Anyways, thanks for sharing some thoughts. Again, just sharing some thoughts. Thanks, Daniel and Michael. Uh, I, I thank you again, Matt. And so many things here I think are super important. I don't want to spend you know in a, too much time on this, but there's so much to talk about. But what I re, the first one I want, want to really talk about was this one, how um, things are very different now. So you know, Matt says that has some, um, you know, uh, sleepless nights and there's still some fear and anxiety, but things are different now. And the way I look at this is the following, that when you don't understand sleep, you don't understand what's happening, you don't understand that is kind of the fear of being awake that is driving everything that's happening, that hyper arousal, then you easily go into the rabbit hole. You start researching and trying and experimenting. Now, when you understand sleep, and you understand that insomnia really comes from that whole trip down the rabbit hole, then you will still have nights where you sleep a little. The fear anxiety may still be there for a while, but you will not go into the rabbit hole. And here's the thing. When you're not going into the rabbit hole, you are going away from it. And a lot of people have trouble sleeping kind of 
even after they graduated bedtime or they, they spent some time on the channel or whatnot. And then that's always my go-to thing is like, but you know so much that you will not go into the rabbit hole. And when you're not going to rabbit hole, you are going the other direction. And that that is super, super helpful. So that's one, one big insight here uh, that I think um, is really helpful. And then uh, the other one was, uh, and this is a big one too, when Matt says, you know, he's no longer fearful of like uh, health consequences or that aspect that that caused them to have insomnia in the first place, but he's fearful of experiencing certain emotions. And to me, this is a, a very common example of how when the brain is in this kind of safety mode, it's trying to keep you safe from something. And you teach it that, okay, you don't have to be afraid of being awake at night. Then it often finds something else because it's like the brain's like the safety machine. It's like always looking for things to keep you safe from. Sometimes it becomes this other thing. Like I, so often I have somebody's like, oh, my insomnia is better now, but now my tinnitus is acting up or now my restless legs are acting up or something like that. And to me, that's a sign that the, the uh, kind of the fear, the anxiety, has just kind of been been um, shifted. So the safety machinery in the brain is, sh is shifting to something else, something else to look out for and focus on and pay attention to that now becomes the problem. But that often actually does not become a, a prolonged thing because you can so easily share with that person that, you know what, it's the same thing all over again. Like your brain is just trying to be the, to keep you safe, but it's, it's getting a little confused again. Uh, but I think this is sort of similar to that, that, you know, instead of being fearful of not sleeping, you know, the brain is in the safety mode. And for Matt, it became like, it doesn't want to have certain emotions. It doesn't want to experience jealousy. And that becomes the fear of being jealous, the fear of being judged. And also there's this aspect of meaning. Like if I don't sleep, then kind of like, what does that mean? Who am I? Like, am I a such and such person because I don't sleep, et cetera. That aspect of meaning is also, also very common. But the radar thing I think was a very common, uh, very important insight from Matt here. And let's see, um, and, and also the parents too, how they sort of interestingly were not afraid of this at all. And so, yeah, I think uh, th those were some really, really important insights here from Matt. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. And, and uh, one of the reasons I really want to share this was to highlight how for some people, if, if the thoughts that drove the insomnia were not that deep seated, uh, and you maybe didn't have insomnia for such a long time, then you you may do well after a fairly short time, just a couple of weeks or something like that, and you're sleeping well again, and you're starting to forget about the whole episode. But oftentimes when the thoughts that drove the insomnia are kind of entrenched, there was a lot of fear, there was a lot of anxiety, then the journey towards like liberation where there's no fear, no anxiety, you know, that is often kind of a bumpy journey where all kinds of things can happen, you know, that that race safety radar is so strong that it can hone in on all kinds of things. So um, I just want you to know that that's not uncommon, nothing strange about that. And uh, I want to thank Matt again for sharing these thoughts. So hope this is helpful to you. If you have any questions, you know, post them in the comments or you can always head over to the sleepcoachschool.com and there's a banner up top where you can um, leave questions for open class. And with that said, I'll say bye-bye for now and hope you have to have you back real soon. Until then, take it easy.